Hello everyone. I, will, I want to welcome you guys to AI Plus Club Unilag Virtual Bootcamp. And this edition is all about getting you started with machine learning. All right. So before we go ahead, I would love to introduce myself. I am Odema Kinde Elisha Jesu Tofumi. And I'm a data scientist and also a researcher at DSN, where we conduct machine learning research. And we do write a we do write papers on those research works we do, all right. And I'm also the DSN campus community manager, all right, at Data Science Nigeria. So that's my Twitter handle, my Medium, my GitHub, and my email. If you want to reach out to me on anything relating to machine learning, yeah, all right. So let's move on. So we are going to be talking about machine learning actually, but before we get started with machine learning, let's we are going to be looking at the following things. That's what's machine learning, types of machine learning, branches of supervised learning, classification algorithm. Then we are going to be working through um, a data set whereby we are going to build a, a machine learning model. And that's the Titanic data set. It's available on, on, on Cargo. All right. So let's move on. So what is machine learning? Machine learning is an act of giving computers the ability to learn from data make decision and give accurate information on an unknown information which we know the results all right what am i basically trying to talk about so machine learning is basically just like as we have those uh, as we have um, the two words machine and learning that is making machine learn something all right so we know that our machines basically are programmed systems so and for them to be a programmed a programmable system, definitely they are working on some certain set of inputs, and in this case we call them datas or data or whatever we might want to call it. So just like we know that a computer is um, is an electronic device that takes in data, processes it, and gives an information. So that is basically what, what machine learning is basically doing. It operates, it feeds on data, learns from data, learns the pattern from data, and then it does some basic operation in learning those patterns and then give a particular result. So when you are trying to give your computer the ability or your machine or the robots or whatever it might be, the ability to learn from data and then it's it's able to intuitively um, give an accurate result or an accurate information based on what you fed it with. Then that is what we call machine learning. Do we get it? All right, so let's move on. So machine learning can be subdivided into two classes. Your machine learning can either be supervised or unsupervised. Though we have semi-supervised, but the two main classes I would love you guys, I would just want to introduce you guys to is supervised and, un and unsupervised. So when we say something is supervised, just um, related to what we call supervision. Supervision. All right, so just like you have somebody watching over you, trying to ensure that, yes, you're doing things the right way. So that's supervised learning. All right, so su supervised learning is, is an aspect of machine learning that deals with the fact that y the data your machine is learning from your machine has more it, it has the information it's learning from and it also has the target it's trying to achieve but it has it has a goal so all those informations are provided for it to learn just like you have a child you've been sending that child to school and the child is learning this learning that under the supervision of the of of the stroke of the instructor or the tutor so the tutor is ensuring that the child is actually learning something. So that's supervised learning. So in this case, in machine learning, the, the, it's, it's basically called um, a data that has a label or a data that has a target, something that you want to achieve from what it's learning. That's supervision. But once it doesn't have, once you are not providing it with something to achieve, such that you just want it to find patterns or you want it to intuitively look for the pattern in that data or make its own decision re relating to that data without without it you just want it to find okay what could be the pattern 
or what could be the relationship in this data, what could be some insight in this data that I'm not seeing. So I wanted to just give me some insight. So that, that has to do with uh, unsupervised learning. And supervised learning can basically be, your supervised learning um, problem can either be regression or classification. So I'll be handling the, the classification aspect. All right, then um, the unsupervised learning can, the unsupervised learning, we, we have various techniques that you can use for unsupervised learning. And that includes clustering, PCA, dimensionality reduction, and an NMF. I won't be able to go into that, but I'll be focusing on the classification principle on the supervised learning. All right, so what is classification? Classification has to do with, just like you have from the word, it's coming from the word class, class. So class, or what we call sub separation. All right, so classification in the sense that you have you you have a problem whereby you're trying to you're trying to make your computer separate something that belongs to a particular class from something that belongs to another class. So that is what we call classification. So your classes, the number of classes you're trying to deal with can be can be two. It can't be one. It cannot be one. So that's why we call class. We, we call it classification. So that it has to be. It has to definitely be more than one. All right. So once it, once the classes you're dealing with is is just two, then that's a binary classification problem in machine learning. But once the kind of problem you're trying to solve has to do with more than two classes, then you can say it's a multi-classification problem. So that is so. Examples of classification problem includes okay, you're trying to classify um, a spam email from a non-spam email, or you're trying to classify industrial locations from um, hospitable locations or from residential areas based on certain features or certain information. Do we get it? So there are a lot of there are a lot of examples. Okay, you're trying to classify. A type of car. Let's say um, you're trying to cl classify um, a truck from from car, or you're trying to you're trying to s um, classify cats from dogs, from uh, from an elephant and some other things. So all those things you're trying to make your computer see some basic patterns and then tell us, oh, is this a cat? Is this a dog? Is this an elephant? Is this um, whatever it might it might it may be? So if it is more if the classes you are dealing with is more than two then it's a multi-class problem but if it is just um um if it's just two then it's a binary class problem all right so let's move on so classification i got classification we now understand what classification is now in order to be able to perform classification in order for you to be able to um, classify um in order for you to be able to run through a classification problem, we have what we call classification algorithms. All right, so examples of those algorithms are logistic regression, support vector classifier, decision tree classifier, random forest classifier, and some boosting algorithms like SDBoost, CatBoost, and other boost. All right, so before I, I, I won't be diving into the mathematical application of all these things. I will just be showing you how to use them, how to apply them. Now. One thing I want, you, I want you to understand is all these things are algorithms. They are algorithms that have been built such that they they can they can they are they are fully optimized to classify information based on some certain type of information. All right. So one of the uh, um, one of the one one of the first algorithm you want to first of all look into that has to be classification is logistic and it's kind of really 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 optimized for binary classification let me get it all right let's just move on so that we can actually see what see all of these things in action all right so let's get started with using titanic so the data set i'm trying to use is actually available here all right so you can just click on this link over here we have that you go to cargo www.cargo.com go to competitions and then you click on Titanic so you can just join the competition then go to the data aspect click on data download the data and once you once you are done with the pre-processing and everything then you can now make your submission do we get it all right 
So let's move now to the notebook. I'm running this on Google Colab. So I'm running this on Google Colab. So the first thing you want to do if you are trying to run this on Colab with me also, the first thing you want to do is to mount your drive. The data I'm trying to work with, I downloaded it from Cargo and I dropped it on my Google Drives to make it very easy for me to um, to analyze on Colab. I can actually you can actually upload, but you can actually upload to Colab. But I'm just using my Google Drive. So if you use your Google Drive, you mount your Google Drive this way. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to move to your you want to do this so that your notebook can be looking at your drive then you then since i have it in the folder called titanic on my google drive i needed to navigate do you understand so that is the reason why i had to in my drive i had to go to my drive and then go to a folder called titanic so and these are the informations i have so i have the train.csv i have the test.csv so i can go ahead and create my notebook you can whatever in that place and then you can now do some analysis so the next thing you want to do is i don't i'm supposed i'm not supposed i'm not supposed to be going through all this part but just to just have a brief uh, recap of the things you should have done before you start building your model in machine learning so you need to import the library so that libraries we are going to be using or you, you should have been introduced to this before now all right so you load your data into csv all right, so as you're loading your train data, you do the same thing for your test data. Then you can have, then you can now go ahead and do the data.info so you can have an idea of what the data is all about, the columns you're handling, the type of, the, to know the number of valid informations, and then the data type, whether it's an integer, a float, or an object. All right, so then you can now go ahead and do some feature engineering and feature insight. So I will just be bypassing all of that. I believe it must, all of this must have been introduced to you before now. All right. So how we just go or bypass the visual, feature engineering and the visualization aspect. So let's go into the modeling aspect. All right. So now we want to model the data. So after doing your your feature engineering, you've done your cleaning, you've done your pre-processing. You should have you should have your data look somewhat like this. It you you, you might it might not look exactly like this because your pre-processing step is definitely or might might be far different from mine because the way we think at solving problem isn't isn't the same all right but the most important thing is every information in your column has to be has to be numerical so either it's a float or an integer it's just have to be numerical because the data you want to feed into your algorithm to learn your algorithm only works on numerical data so it doesn't work on integers it, it doesn't work on strings rather so it has to be an integer or a float so if you are passing in if you are passing in um, a string like um, I am here then you have to basically you you have to basically tell the computer what is I am here but if you are trying if you are able to translate I am here into integers it makes your computer or your machine it makes it easier for you to understand what you're trying to talk about or what you're trying to analyze because it will see all those things as an entity and it's going to be able to map the relationship the differences the disparity the the similarity be behind all those things and you have to make all those things unique and that's the reason why you are doing pre-processing and cleaning and future engineering all right so if you can see this is my train data so i have p class age CBSP, part fair survived sex female sex male and back c and back q and back s so what then this is my test data also I have p class age the same thing but the only difference between my tr my train data and my test data which is what i'm this is what i downloaded from cargo that i'm actually going to be predicting that i've transformed as i was doing the same thing on my future my future engineering cleaning all right so the only difference between the two of them right now is my train data has a colon called survive which is what i'm trying to predict and that is the target it is the target and that is that is um, a binary classification because you're trying to predict whether the person survived or the person did not survive so it's binary it's either the person survived or it doesn't survive so if it is more than 
maybe it survived, not survive, and then something else, then it's multi-classification because it's more than two. But because it's it's um it's just a two class problem, then it's a binary classification problem. So one thing you need to know before you go that uh, deep dive into modeling your your um your data points, your input data points must be the same thing aside from the target. Your train data should have the target. So when you now want to model, you now separate the train data from the from the input data from the input data. So your input data have to correlate. So now what I did is okay, this is my train data. I'm separating out that column, what what I wanted to predict, which is survived. So I'm setting that to Y, a variable called Y, and I'm dropping it from the data and then setting every other information to be hex. So if you look at it here, we have how many features? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So when you do that, you're going to be left with just 10 features to work with. 10 features. All right. Another thing I would also want to introduce to you before you actually deep dive into the modeling, I'm sure you know, the person that took this part actually explained this before now. All right, so is the aspect of trying to normalize your data and then make it look in good shape. So there's what we call normalization. Normalization is basically trying to trying to scale down your data such that the maximum you can have in that data is one and the minimum you can actually have in that data is a zero so that's that's basically normalization so you're trying to normalize your data to a value called one all right so other things you could do is standard scalars min max scalars but for this case i'll be using min max scalars so min max scalars basically does what what it does is that it takes a particular column and then it divides every respective information in that column by the maximum value. So if 3 is the maximum value here, it's going to divide it by 3. So this becomes 1, this becomes 1, this becomes 1, this becomes 1, this becomes 1. Do we get it? Such that at the end of everything, it's going to do that for all the columns. So such that at the end of everything, every column has a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 1. Uh, yeah, as a minimum of zero or, or and a maximum of one. Actually, you could just go ahead and fit this into your model. But at times, when there's um, um, when there's a very linear relationship between your features, it kind of help your machine learn better, such that there's not going to be high variation of bias in the data. All right, so um, I convert. Then let's just go straight into the modeling. All right, the next thing is after after doing that, after all right, to actually apply your min max scalars, you first of all have to instantiate the class this way. Then you can now call you can now call a method from the class called fit transform. So what fit transform does is it first of all fits to that data, learns the pattern in the data, find the maximum in each column and then Trans the transform it then does what we call transform. Tr so transform basically does what based on the maximum and minimum values that you've it has learned from the data, it will now divide every respective column by the maximum such that the maximum in a particular column is one and the minimum is zero. So that is what fit transform is going to do. So but since it has we've been able to fit, so the next thing we can do on the test data we are actually trying to forecast is to just do what transform we don't need to fit again yes we don't need to fit again all right so i just converted into a data frame because the aspect of this is just going to be an array so converted into a data frame so that we can actually see the way it looks like so you look at this you see that there is no input data that is greater than one everything is just others uh, everything is between zero and one all right so the same thing for the test data so you can see that there is a strong correlation between them looks exactly the same way. So the next thing you want to do is to now split your data into train and test. So to split your data into train and test, you have to do from SQLand.model selection import train test split. All right. 
So why are we actually splitting our train data? You know, we have the train data we downloaded from Cargo, and we also have the test data we also downloaded from Cargo. So Cargo gave us train data, and the train data has um, the target feature which is survived. But the test data from Cargo doesn't have the target feature called survive because that's what Cargo wants us to forecast. Do you get it? And that's actually the beauty of machine learning. So what you now do is you have to, after pre-processing your train data, Whatever you do on your train data, you have to do the same thing on your test data. So your train data, when you now want to build your model, you have to split it into two again or three. So if you are splitting into two, you have to split it into train and test again. So such that you'll be able to use a part of it to train your model with respect to the target you want it to achieve. And then the other part of it, you will now test it, test the performance of the model and then compare the results with the results you actually know. Do, do you get it? And that would now form our, uh, that would now form the evaluation of the model to see whether the model actually did very well or the model did not do very well. Do you get it? So that is that. Then after when you've now been able to evaluate on, on the test data and you, you are satisfied with the way the model is, you can now go ahead and now take the model and then use it to predict on an unknown data, which is your test data that you downloaded from Cargo. And then whatever it predicts, you can now submit it to Cargo. All right, so let's go ahead and that's why, so this is our train data, X and Y. So we also have the test data, but we are not just gonna touch that because that's what we want to predict. But we want to learn first, first from our train data first. So our X and Y, always, Ensure that your Y feature, ensure that your Y feature, that is, your survived is no longer in your X to avoid feature leakage. To avoid feature leakage. If your if your if survived is also in X and you're actually trying to predict survived, then you are you are going you are going to you are not learning anything. Your model is not learning anything, it's just overfitting. Alright. So we say a model is overfitting if it's if it's if it has learned very well but is performing poorly in real life or it's performing poorly on a data it has not seen but if if the model is if the model does very well when it was learning and it does very well when it was being tested on an unknown data then it has learned that kind of model is a generalized model but and another thing is what we call underfitting underfitting basically means the data did very well when it was tr when it was it it did poorly when you are training it but when you are testing it on an unknown data it did very well so that those kind of data overfitting and underfitting we do not want such it's not a good machine learning model a good machine learning model is a machine learning model that generalizes all right let's go ahead to build our model all right so i will basically be using three algorithms logistic regression Random forest and Gideon boosting. So logistic regression is is one of the fundamental algorithms you want to use. So to import all of that, you have to run this. You have to import it this way. Now, SD boost is a boosting algorithm. It's more or less, it's an assembler. It's a very robust algorithm. Like, and the same thing goes to random forest and gradient boosting. But I'm just going to I'm going to build model with each of all those ones, and we are going to see the comparison. We are going to compare. So in order to, after importing them this way, the next thing you need to do is to now instantiate the classes of those models that you want to apply. So you, you do it this way, allow, is equals to logistic regression. Do it as some parameters, but by default, let's just, let's just use the default parameters by not passing anything in. So random forest, gradient boosting as GBR, random forest as R, E, N, D, logistic regression as L, R. All right, so, we don't need to see too much. So the descriptive analysis is just basically making us to see the mean, the standard deviation, the mean, the minimum, the lower percentile, the median, upper percentile, and the maximum. You discover that the maximum information here for all of them, for each colon, is one, and the minimum is zero. That's to show that our mean max actually did a lot of work. All right, so I also did this in order to ensure that, yes, there is no non value. So for every column I replaced the non value with the median. So you you can you can always do this to ensure that you don't have model problems because sometimes when people start running their model, 
it now tells them oh there's a non-value there's an invalid value in your model so everything has to be numerical all right so you might you might want to do this to ensure that yes there's no trouble in your data all right so now let's look at logistic regression model so i have been able to split my data into train and test so i have my hex train my hex test my y train my y test all right so what i'll now do is i'll feed my x train and my y train so for the model to learn for the logistic regression model to learn you have to call logistic regression the class instance dot fit and then you pass in what you want it to learn from so this single line would make the algorithm learn from your data so in order to now evaluate to evaluate the the way the model has what the model has learned you just do ll dot score so it will just give you more or less like the performance of the model so it's telling me that this model did very well like it's 78.52 percent accurate in learning if um, the patterns in this data all right so now let us since it has learned let us now predict to predict you do allow dot predict on a known data that we already know so you can discover that we did not it it has not seen this data this model LR has not seen this data x test but we want to see the performance of what it has learned on a data that we know the, the results so when we predict when it's predicts so we are now trying to say okay since we know the data as we know the actual result as y test let us now check let us now compare the result of the y test the actual result with what we predicted so that is accuracy score so i'm trying to check for the accuracy so with accuracy score you can check for the accuracy and it's telling me that the accuracy for this logistic regression is 79 on an unknown data it has not seen and whereas when it was learning it was 78 that shows that yes this model is actually learning very very well so another metric is f1 score so the f1 score is 71 the precision is 75 the recall is 68 that shows that this model is actually a very good model that is workable but actually you could do more there's something we call model parameter hyper tuning whereby you try and optimize your model you try and tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak in order to actually improve the performance of this model so but i won't be diving into that in this lecture but i just want you guys to just have a first insight to how to build your model all right so now let's check out other robust models more robust models than logistic regression let's check out random forest i'm going to come back to this i'm going to come back to this let's check out random forest so you instantiate the class you fit the model so you can learn and then you check the model performance now if you look at this random forest actually did very well 96.96 so it's 96 percent or let's say 97 percent accurate in learning it's learned almost all the pattern in that data so we should expect this since it has learned almost all the pattern in this data we should expect this model to be more robust than logistic so but let us now predict on a data that we already know its result so when we predict and we compare it with the actual result we saw that the performance dropped to 77 from 96 this is actually good but not good enough as as um as logistic regression has done so logistic regression is more or less like it's kind of more generalized than random forest though random forest learned a lot when it was training but still it's kind of dropped the, the, the difference in dropping is kind of huge so we can basically say logistic regression is still far much more better than the random forest the random forest is kind of robust so what is what is what is this basically trying to tell us not all not all robust model need work on any type of data some type of data can just require just simple algorithms and you have an optimal result compared to now going to looking for robust models robust models only works based on very tax key and then um, um, data points that that are very that are very difficult to understand those that's when your robust model is very very effective such that your um, weak models or basic models or fundamental models would not be able to do very well at all right so the same thing goes to random forest 
the same thing goes to gradient boosting so gradient boosting when we did the same thing for gradient boosting it was 87 percent accurate and then you saw that this is kind of a bit better yes oh was it logic regression was 78 79 78 79 where gradient boosting was 87 80 it's when it was learning it was 87 88 percent almost 88 percent accurate but when we tested it was 80 percent better that's actually better you see that this is a little bit better it's even far much more better than random forest that lands too much but you know performance dropped but greater boosting boosted a bit than that of random forest and it's better than that of the logistic regression so every model can be optimized so look at the f1 score the precision the recall and everything so now that we've been able to see how this model works do you get it now let us now see okay now that we know that our model is okay on an average it's 79 or 80 percent accurate in predicting on an un unknown, unknown data now let us now predict on the data we want to submit to cargo so in order to submit to cargo so for the regression let us go to that part you first you will predict of course to predict on the data it has not seen which you want to submit to cargo you pass on the data you want to submit to cargo which is what you've processed as test data which is what we have here this is the test data that we want to submit so you pass in what you want to predict you have your prediction then you create a dictionary called you can just give it any name i'm calling my own dict data empty empty dictionary then i'm passing in passenger id because what i want to submit on cargo cargo only wants to see the passenger id and your prediction which is survived so your so that's why i have to extract out passenger id you know i dropped everything from the start if you look at it here all right so um just as we have train data here this is the original data from cargo so we have passenger id so we want to predict the survival of people based on their id so it, this person id 1214 will the person survive or not that is basically what cargo is telling you to do so for my test data i have to just extract it so and that is what i did here and i dropped it so i extract it into a f into a variable called passenger id so that's why i was able to pass it in here all right so passenger id so whatever you're also submitting to cargo the the key or let, let me say the column name has to match so if uh, if passenger id has to be capital letter p you also have to be capital letter p so it has to match then your what your output prediction which are uh, your hospital prediction which is in this case final prediction also have to match the the name so on cargo it does it's they want to see survived not capital s so it has to match then you can once you've done this you can now export it you can convert it into a data frame with this and then export it to csv give it the name you want it to be or export it into as an excel x as an excel spreadsheet and then you need you need to set index to false so that you can be able to submit because if your index is not false it's going to be seeing it as it's going to be seeing a new column of index and it's it's not going to be seeing past your idea and survived properly as it should see so that this is how to make your submission so once you've done this and you've been able to run this cell successfully just go into your google drive go into the folder where you created this the folder where you created your titanic and then you would see your csv file called log submission you can do the same thing the same thing goes to random forest the same thing goes to random forest you just do your prediction and then do the same thing give it a name your submission file give it a name the same thing goes for gradient boosting you do the same so i really want to believe you guys have been able to you've been able to um have an insight into what all of this is all about so basically what i'm what what you need to understand about this thing is you need to know that there are various algorithms that you can apply into solving a classification problem re relating to machine learning but you have to know which one works best so in this case i will really say logistic regression did much more better than all of them because it's kind of it generalized because the 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 
its performance when it was training is almost similar is very very close to its performance when it was when it was when it was being uh, when we told when we gave it new data points to predict and it did very well unlike others that the, there was very huge variation in the data in its in their performance from when it was being from when they were being trained to when they were um, being tested so I want to believe you guys have been able to have a lot of fun regarding this and I believe you guys have an understanding about how this works so I want to wish you the best in your machine learning career so get to solve a lot of more problem one of the things you can do in order to get better about this thing is that expose yourself more to data expose yourself work more on data work more on informations work more on a lot of all these things and you would you would understand them better so thank you for listening to my session thank you for having me and god bless